It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I am taking a look at a card game called Multi-Universum. In this one, the players are t scientists, and we done messed up. We have opened portals to other dimensions, and we are now trying to close those portals while gathering victory along the way. I guess we get prestige for closing them and not destroying the world as we know it. So uh, in the game, you're going to be using cars to move around your little meeple, closing, gathering tools, closing those portals, and trying to get, as I said, the most victory points. It's uh, a fairly straightforward game that is very puzzly in its... Uh, uh, in the way it, it develops, you know, in the way it is played. So let me give you a look. We'll come on back. I'll tell you if I like it and... I enjoy these kinds of games. I like puzzly games. I like card games. Uh, I, you know, it's got a, a lot of uh, chances for me to like it. Do I? Let's find out in a little bit. Here we go. All right, so here's our game set up. We have the five different locations. Each player is going to have their little meeple starting on one of the transformers there, the machines. And everybody uh, has a hand of three cards from the deck here. Some are put in the discard pile. Besides this, every player is also going to have a card in front of them that denotes a couple of holding places. You're going to have two sides to this. On this side, you can put tools, which you basically slide under so that only the tool part of the card is showing. The other side is to collect your victory points in which every time you close one of these portals, you slide the card under and you can just look at the victory points and the symbol for more victory points, which is what you're trying to do in the game. You are trying to get the most victory points you can. Game's gonna be over when several of these stacks are completely gone. And then you get victory points for the number in the top corner there, which is one, threes, or fives. The fives, of course, being harder to close, needing more tools. And then also bonus points for a little set collection going on across the bottom there. So, on your turn, you are going to be taking three actions, and those actions are going to be driven by the cards you are holding in your hand. You are going to be able to trigger actions uh, based on where you are. As you can see, all the cards have different actions down the side, and they are color-coded to the locations. Also, they have a number, so uh, it's nice and easy to figure out what's going on. And so on my turn, let's say I'm yellow, I'm standing there on the, uh, on the twos. Depending on which card I play, I can do one of uh, several different actions, as well as I may discard and redraw as an action, and I may also give myself uh, a tool here as an action. And once I've finished that, then I'm going to draw some new cards. It'll be the next player's turn. And so I'm not going to be going over every single action. Here. I'll just give you an idea of how the game sort of plays out. But you can, I could, on my turn, I could play this card and then move because it has a little feet symbol next to yellow, which is where I am. And so let's say I'm going to go from here any other, uh, to any other transformer here. I'll go to the red one, which now means I'm looking at the red symbols on the cards. And so my next thing could be to play this one, which allows me to draw cards from the deck of cards. And then for my final action, I could uh, recycle, which is this symbol here which allows me to go through the discard pile and take any tool I want out and put it under that card I showed you, and now, now I have that tool. Ultimately, what you're attempting to do is use this symbol right here, the gate closing symbol, uh, here, right here in green in this case, at that location to close a gate with the, with the necessary tool. So once I have the three tools depicted there, I have those three symbols, and I'm at that location, I can play a card with that gate closing symbol in red, so like that one, and then I'll give away those tools, I'll take this card off the top of the deck, revealing the next one, and grabbing some victory points. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you'll be trying to, every, every round's like a little bit of a puzzle where you are trying to figure out, okay, if I move here, I'm in blue now, so now I'll be looking at the other symbols, uh, how do I manipulate all of this, so I'm collecting the right stuff, and then cashing it in for victory points. And as I said at the end of the game, you score those cards, you score uh, some more points for the symbols, and also for every two you haven't uh, cashed in, you're gonna get a point for each of those as well. And that gives you a pretty good idea of how the game operates. Uh, the actions are, as I said, you can move, you can recycle, you can close the gate, you can draw some more cards, and then the little robot action here, it looks like a little robot, 
just lets you trigger a power on each of the transformers here themselves and things like uh, you know draw three cards discard two things like uh, switch the order of these gates even switch, one of them has a power that lets you switch places, you know, the, where the gates are, so that you can make your symbols work for you. They let you uh, do all sorts of manipulation like that, so that's that's sort of the idea there. And that's pretty much it. I don't want to go into too much detail, uh, but that, that should give you just a, just a taste of how the gameplay works. Do I do want to mention that it is kind of a thinking game, so it's a little bit puzzly. It's uh, not a necessarily a fast-paced game. But I think seeing how the symbols work and, and understanding that you have to chain things together should uh, allow you to appreciate what I'm talking about here. So, uh, yeah, let's go back up top and let me tell you what I thought about it. Okay, so that'll do it. That's a quick and dirty uh, look at multi-universum. Let's, uh, let's talk about it here with our target audience system. Thematic ties. The game has a cool theme. I enjoy the, uh, the idea of not exploring these worlds but shutting them down so that, you know, nothing bad happens. It's a, it's a neat idea, and uh, it, it all works together to give you basically pretty pictures, which we're going to talk about in aesthetics. The quality of the components and, and the look of everything. The artwork is fantastic. It's really, really impressive. Card quality is good. Meeples are meeples. They're fine. And uh, the iconography here is very well done. This this is a game that with this much iconography, there's, there's you know, there's many games with more of it, but... Uh, the amount that is here is handled with care, which is a huge plus. This could have been botched if the iconography was messy, if those things were not, uh, did not become second nature just a couple of rounds into it. I like that, uh, you know, so that's uh, big props to the company for, for how well they handled the look of the cards, the uh, graphic design here. Replayability and how well it scales. I'll start with that. I think it's definitely best in the middle. It plays one through five, but you want to play with three. Uh, maybe four. You know, that's the best number I've found because your turns will come around quick. Uh, there, you can certainly get a little bit of analysis paralysis in the game as you stare your three cards and figure out how you can chain things. I got to jump to this one, play that card, all that stuff. Um, and replayability is high. I found that the game is not a one game trick pony. That's a thing, right? Uh, you will, as you play multiple games, you start to develop a shorthand sort of for how to make what you want to happen happen and your your turns will be a little bit quicker because you can play the feet which then takes me to blue which then i play this tool and then close that gate boom that's the last tool i needed i like that you know it, it it um it will develop and then the order of the gates in which in each stack is randomized also so uh that's another thing that you have to contend with as you're playing the game the game length it's fine. It's not a short... I mean, it is a short game, but it doesn't feel short. The end does not necessarily sneak up on you, but it does not outstay its welcome, which is really what I'm looking at here when I say game length. Does the game feel like it outstays its welcome? It does not. I liked it. Ease of play. Is it fiddly? Is it easy to play and teach? Uh, teaching is a little tricky, but other than that, once you figure out how to manipulate the system, everything else falls in place, you know. Uh, the, the turns are engaging it's like solving mini puzzles and i enjoy that but it is not difficult to play the game uh you it's a card driven game and and they mean it it is just you play cards to do pretty much everything or you discard some and redraw so it gets high marks in the ease of play department and then lastly tactics and strategy and it is a largely tactical game though you do want to make those sets you want to collect the the right uh sets of of uh symbols on the cards and so that is, there. there is some strategy in that. Maybe rising a card to the top of a deck that you are hoping to acquire because it has a set, you you know, a symbol you already have, that sort of thing. So there is some of that, but it's largely tactical. And it makes sense. You have three cards to work with. You will get some new cards and you plan just for that round, which I'm perfectly fine with. I think it works well for this kind of game and it is engaging every round. Except for, uh, and this is my one negative not a huge negative but it is a negative i want to mention sometimes you end up getting stuck at a location that is no longer useful to you and you cannot seem to find the car to walk away from it um in the rules and if i missed this then i apologize and you can ignore my negative but as far as i can tell in the rules there is no rule to get around that you just hope to draw more cards and find 
you know, I'm stuck in yellow, I need the yellow feet symbol, walking symbol, and I cannot seem to get it, you might waste a turn or two or three. That's, that, you know, it did not happen to me in any of the games we've played, but I've seen it happen to other people, and I could tell it was making, you know, it was leaving a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth. So, not ideal. Uh, it can happen. You will still, you know, you can generate a fairly decent amount of card draw, but just be aware of it. It is, it is there. It's possible they've addressed this later on in updated rules. I don't know, but as of right now, that's my one thing that sort of stands out as, huh, that that's unfortunate that I could just get stuck here, you know. Other than that, and this is a minor thing, again, I'm not saying it like breaks the game or anything, but other than that, this is one that really impressed me. When I first saw the box, I was thinking this is going to be a little bit of a trading card game vibe. It's not. It's a puzzly Euro game. You know, card-driven one, certainly, but it is so engaging. It is interesting. It is got a cool thing. It, it has a cool theme. It has really neat artwork, the world, you get a glimpse of these strange uh, universes. The whole thing works surprisingly well. It does not scale super well, but if you play with the right players who are going to get into the little puzzles, you play with a good crowd, you are really going to have a good time, I think, and I certainly have enjoyed this game. It's one I would recommend, and for that, it's going to get a seal of approval from me. Multi-Universum, is surprisingly clever and, and streamlined and well-designed, uh, so I would recommend you look into it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.